Here we are at the site of the famous Rockfall on Monaghan's Bluff on the Bridal Track. Uh, this is probably the reason this track is well known nowadays, uh, but it wasn't always the case. Uh, this track began its life in the mid 1800s as a horse track um, and the reason it's called the Bridal Track comes from the fact that it actually was so narrow that they had to lead the horse through single file by the bridle. Um, in I think the late 1870s it got widened uh, enough to fit carriages, so horse-drawn carriages obviously, and then eventually in the early 1900s, about 1930s, 1940s, it got widened enough or repaired enough let's say to put a motor vehicle on it. Uh, if you came through here today you would have seen a lot of campers. I uh, came through here 150 years ago you would have seen miners everywhere and Chinese miners with their vegetable gardens down on the river there. Uh, horses, buggies obviously, uh, very very different scenes to what you see today. Uh, and in more modern times we had this rockfall here which closed the track in 2010 and then 13 years later finally we have a bypass which is up above us actually um, and the track reopened I think in February 2023 so we're able to come out and enjoy it now but this is the, the spot that, that caused all the drama this is the closure the, the famous rock floor and uh, fair enough too you wouldn't want to skirt much more than a very narrow bike around here these days so join us as we uh, take a tour through the bridle track we'll check out basically every single camp um, along the length of it and uh, yeah show you guys what it's all about Bruin Bun Reserve is the southmost campground on the bridle trail it includes a couple of tiered levels uh, with an upper grass level on the same level as the toilet and a lower level that provides direct access to the river. Henderson campground includes a level grassed area up by the roadside and also a sandy camping area down by the river. The sand is quite soft in spots so you'll definitely need to air down and probably engage low range to get down on the riverfront. Tattersall's Hole is a long, narrow area uh, along the edge of the river between the road and the river. It's all grassy, it's quite level, uh, it's a good little spot. Suitable for groups if you're happy to all line up in a row. Black Gate Reserve includes wide open grassy areas down by the river amongst the she oaks and also separate upper levels that are a little bit slopy but do have the added bonus of sheltered picnic tables. Dog Reserve is just a grass clearing right by the side of the track, uh, also right by the side of the river. It's only a small area, uh, suitable for a few vehicles, not really large groups. 
it is still possible to get up to the site of the rockfall at Monaghan's Bluff. It's either a, a rock scramble along the original alignment of the track uh, for an area that they've, I guess, built some retaining for the new track, or a scramble directly up, essentially, the cliff face from the river level. Um, very steep, but it is possible. Johnson's Hole is a really picturesque little spot, uh, nice grassy areas right by the river with soaring cliffs on the other side of the river. Uh, the flat areas are a little bit lumpy so maybe not suitable for tent based campers um, and there are houses very nearby uh, so it's not the most private campground um, so probably not one where you want to create a lot of noise or get your gear off. Ramwick Hole and Grimley Reserve are two separate campgrounds with the same sort of name. So we're going to call the south one Ramwick Hole. Uh, it includes grassy areas by the river that would be suitable for groups. Uh, there's a slower current there so it would be a nice spot for swimming. There is actually a little beach there as well. Grimley Hole is the north section. Uh, there's no facilities there at all. Uh, it's camping on either grassy areas back from the river or sandy areas right on the river. Um, not a, not large areas, not sort of groups, but definitely fit in a few vehicles there and some nice riverfront access. I like this riff, so I think I'm gonna write a song. It's light and calm and sweet and at the same time upbeat. And I can't think of what to say, so I'll just write it anyway. But now I need a quote. This would be perfect if only the verse fit. I don't know how I'd mash the two together. It's maybe a new tune called Once in a Blue Moon about the chance of finding love. But it's already been done. There must be a million sad, sad stories in the used bin. I don't really want to join them. This song. Except it's not. Yeah, that was an awesome though. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for asking me why. That's right, man. Thanks for coming. Finger picking hands. Everything sounds great. Everything I see. Sincere, in my finger, in my heart, watch it linger in my heart. See, I'm making a big heart. Also, I understand. It doesn't have to go up, the world's on the floor, followed up with the trumpet and tongue. Alright, 
This is Michigan, but I'm living in not London, nineteen ninety-three. Come on, Matt, get up. Boy. That there is a little piece of uh, history on the track there, an old mine shaft, obviously a gold mine. Probably, um, you know, best part of 150 years old, that one. So, yeah, it's a nice little bit of history to see. The Root Hog Crossing is an alternate route that links the bridle track to Root Hog Road and to Bathurst. It was for a while the bypass to access the northern end of the track from Bathurst after the rockfall. Uh, there's non-designated campgrounds along the west side of the river here, um, but there is probably, probably very, very close by, so it needs to be well looked at. Oh, this is a bit of a uh, secret one for the four-wheel driver. It's a very steep track in, uh, rough and rocky all the way along the banks to this one little grassy spot on the river here. Um, definitely low range required to come into this one. High on a cliff top here, uh, above the junction of the Macquarie and Turon rivers. So the first part of the uh, bridle track, we follow along the Macquarie. And from this point north, uh, all the way until we turn off towards Hillend, we're following the Turon River.
Glen is probably the biggest and most popular camp along the entire track. Um, there's a few separate areas. There's an upper level grass area which is quite level and does include views over the river. Um, and then if you follow the track around there's also riverfront camping along on gravel though so maybe not suitable for tents anything you need pegs basically um, but in recent times it has unfortunately been not looked after by the four wheel drive and camping fraternity and as a result there is fire pits everywhere rubbish everywhere when we went through fires and not been put out um, it needs to be looked after a lot better than it has been or it's gonna be gone very soon Put your bloody fire out, your pests. It's unfortunate when the fuck with. I think I hate that thing now. Oh, now I can't see. Oh. <laughs> oh. And you think, right, it's not long since there's been a flood here, and that would have gone through in the way. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is just wrong. Yeah. <coughs> Just put your fire out. There's no excuse when you're camping literally three meters from the river. Hole Reserve is one of the more picturesque little camps. It's just a, a grass area between the track and the river, um, but it's very nice with soaring cliffs on the other side of the river, uh, shallow swimming with a couple of deep little holes, um, and just a very nice grassy campground, and it's actually quite well looked after.
This one is the final campground uh, heading north anyway on the bridle track. Uh, after this there's just a little uh, mining relic up the hill a bit and then it's Hawkins Hill and Hill End. It's a nice camp this one when it's looked after. Unfortunately not the case at the moment. I wish I'd fill my wheelie bag up this weekend. Yeah. If only it was yours. one does get popular and hasn't been looked after very well lately. We did a bit of a clean up when we were there, um, picking up other people's rubbish, putting out other people's fires, um, but again it needs to be looked after. Bit of a hidden little secret, it's not even hidden, but most people just drive straight past this uh, old battery stand bar surrounded by old mine workings on this hillside, only 100 metres away from Turon Crossing Campground. Nice little piece of history just sitting here. Well, this is where we're going to finish up. This is a uh, little lookout uh, towards the top of the bridle trail. We're only a couple k out of hill end now. Um, yeah, and you can see way back through the, uh, the valley that the Turon River runs through and all the way that we've just come through. So uh, yeah, that's going to finish up this one. I hope you've uh, enjoyed and discovered some new places. And uh, cheers for watching. See ya.